Hello there. What is going on, everyone? Today, we're going to be taking a look at Clash of Minds, Holmes versus Moriarty. Now, this is a two-player card game of deduction and planning the crime of the century. This is a Kickstarter prototype, so everything you're about to see is subject to change. But with that in mind, I will be posting a link in the description below so you can check out the Kickstarter itself and let me know what you guys think down in the comments below. We're going to take a quick run through this game and tell you a little more about it. So in Clash of Minds, Holmes versus Moriarty, you're either going to be playing as Moriarty trying to plan the crime of the century through these three different crime plan threads. The different crime plan cards are going to cause different threads and and these represent the people maybe you're going to kill the murder weapon or how you're going to do it and of course you're also going to have the option to take on the role of Sherlock Holmes himself trying to prevent this crime however he's only got 12 hours to do it and we're going to track that with our little clock card and every failure or misstep makes Holmes lose time Time. And that's one of the things that Moriarty is trying to do, is just trying to slow Holmes down. He doesn't have to stop him completely. He just has to slow him down. So let's talk about how we're going to play this game. So the first thing we need to talk about is the type of cards you're going to have. So a basic game, you're going to have your deck of influence cards. And influence cards are going to be all different types of things related to the actual investigation and the crime scene. You might have policemen. You might have a counterfeit. You might have chloroform. All things, you know, that are representative of Sherlock Holmes and different stories of the time period. We've got smelling salts right here. And one of the things about these different numbers is, uh, these cards, is they have a different number up in the top right. So one of the things we're going to be doing is we're going to be playing influence cards in one of these different threads. So I might play this card. It might go right there. And we're what we need to focus on when we play a card like this is the number in the top right. In this case, it's two. Uh, and the number represents basically how much influence we have at any of these different different crime threads. Once we're all done at the end of a round, we're going to be actually adding up the sum value of all of our numbers. So I might play the smelling salts and chloroform, which in this case would give me a value of number two. But there are also ways to activate these cards using more than just the number in the top right. For example, there is text written on these cards. Um, like in, in this one, you know, if you wanted to use the smelling salts, you, there's a way you can use those with your action cards. And of course, you would turn it sideways. Now you'll notice the number on the top corner is different because now we have a one up there. So by using smelling salts, we decrease its value, but we also get to use its ability. So there's a trade-off. And that's part of the strategy in this game, is determining if you're going to keep cards on a certain value or if you are going to use them. In some cases, the value actually increases. I might play Spy Network, which is worth a zero, but if I use it, uh, it has a value of X, which is going to be X plus one of the X is the number of different copies of this exact same Spy Network. So if I'm able to play like two versions of Spy Network here, and I turn this one sideways by activating it, it will now be worth three. So sometimes cards lose value, but other times cards gain value. So how do you activate uh, these different influence cards? Well, that is going to be in the form of action cards. You're going to have different action cards that you're going to play, uh, and, and they do different things. Uh, but basically, you know, you have this one is the mandatory action card, and this is basically going to be where you actually take another card from your hand and lay it face down. But the other three are going to have different things that you can do. And of course, this symbol right here allows you to activate a card. When you play one of these cards, you're only going to do one of the two symbols on there. One will let you draw a card. One will let you add a, uh, one of your influence cards face down. Uh, and then one other one will let you uh, activate all of those. So I'm going to talk about these a little bit more because we're going to kind of run through uh, you know, how a turn will work. And we'll kind of run through a, a whole sample turn. Uh, and, and we'll be using both influence cards and action cards. And we'll talk about when you use them. So at the beginning of the game, the Moriarty player is actually going to pick up this deck of Crime Thread cards. And they're going to choose... Three different cards. One victim, one felony, and one object. The victim cards are going to have the little crosshairs. The felonies will have the gavel. And then the object is going to have that pistol symbol. Uh, and there's multiple versions of each type. Uh, I've chosen three down here that are going to go face down. For example, I have the queen is going to be our victim. Uh, the felony is going to be kidnapping. So he's going to try to kidnap the queen. 
and he's going to be using a dagger as the object. So he's going to hold her at knife point to kidnap her. And of course, that would constitute the crime of the century. And they're all going to do different things when they are revealed. So in the case of, let's say, Holmes is able to discover the dagger. Well, this when, once he does, it also adds an hour to the clock. And Holmes only has 12 hours, so adding an hour, that's a bad thing. Uh, so, But some of them are going to do good things. Like if Holmes discovers the queen, uh, now there's something, a positive effect for Holmes. And uh, the felony will be more of a neutral effect, uh, something that affects both players about the same. But we've got these three different crime threads that we're going to be trying to build influence on. Now, to win the game, Holmes has to uncover all three before the clock strikes midnight. And Moriarty just has to postpone Holmes from discovering all three. If two are, on, are, are discovered but one is still secret, then Moriarty will win at once time runs out. So, what are we going to do? At the beginning of the turn, we're going to be drawing five influence cards. So, uh, I am playing Moriarty right now, and both decks are the same. The only thing that different, uh, differentiates them is the back. So, we both have access to the same uh, number and types of cards. So, we both have access to crooks, for example, or handcuffs, or smelling salts, etc. Uh, and, and the good strategy part of this is that when you play this multiple times, you will know what your opponent has access to, especially based on what cards they've played already. So this one, you know, the strategy builds the more you play it. Uh, and now at the beginning of the round, once we've each drawn our five cards, and we have the, the crimes all set, uh, the first thing we're going to do is reveal a location at the beginning of each turn. And so in this case, we're going to look at a couple of different things. We're in Hyde Park. He's going to have an effect that affects this particular round. So each round is going to be different than the, than the previous round. Uh, we're going to have an hour counter right here. And this tells us, hey, this is where, we're, where we are for the first hour. So we're going to add one hour to the clock. And I will do that right there. Now it's 1 p.m. Uh, the six here is telling us how many cards we can play. We have a maximum of six influence cards that we can play uh, on this particular turn. So I'll leave that right there. And of course, this one has the extra effect of while using the add one support card, players may choose to place two support cards on the table. So every location is going to have some kind of rule that it that it basically breaks. So uh, what we're going to do first is we're going to place three cards on, on up to three threads face down in secret. And that's the initial prep. So uh, let's just say I decided to do something like that. The Holmes player would do the same thing. Uh, they would play three cards face down. And we don't, I don't know what he's played. He doesn't know what I played. And then once we begin, we're going to draw back up to five. And then we're going to flip all of our cards face over. All right, so now I've drawn back up to five. So now I've got five cards in hand. And I'm going to flip my cards face up. So I've got a three value here. Ah, but Holmes also has a three when he played Opium, which then that can be used to kind of counter a card. I've got a value of two here. Holmes has a value of two. And I've got a value of two here. And Holmes has a value of two. So we are completely tied everywhere. And we're, remember, we can only pl have up to six cards out. So what we're going to do is we're going to now start playing action cards. And we're going to pick up our action card deck. And we're going to begin playing action cards, starting with the first player, who will be Holmes on the first turn. But then we'll be passing a first player token back and forth. Uh, so we'll alternate. But Holmes will be first player this first round. Holmes will get to play action cards first. And that is going to allow us to do different things. So what do the action cards do? So we've got four different action cards. This first one is the obligatory action. This one basically is very simple, and it just says you are going to take one card from your hand and put it into play. And we're going to put it into play on one of these three different mission threads, these crime threads. And what that means is you're just going to set it down there, and you're going to add its value. When a card is face up, you're really only looking at that top value uh, for most of the cards. There are a few exceptions, like, for example, this Opium card, which while it's a value of three, which is the highest, it also has the ability to be tapped kind of as a as an interrupt to uh, reduce its value to one, but it cancels the effect of another card that also gets tapped or turned or activated, turned sideways. So, um, but other than that, you're basically just going to use this card to put one card down. This one you must do on your turn. But additionally, you can play a couple others. You can play these optional cards. Now, each one of these cards has uh, two different symbols on it. When you play one of these cards, you're only going to play 
uh, one of the two symbols on it. So if I were to play this card, uh, I could add a card from my hand to as a support, which is what that plus symbol means, which means I would take one of the cards in my hand, turn it like this, and set it next to one of these th crime threads. Now, a card that's a support does not count towards the limit uh, of six cards per player. Support cards do not count towards that limit, and they only provide value of one and have no other effects other than the fact that they're called support cards. There are some cards in the game that will reference support cards, but other than that, it's basically a dead card that just gives you a permanent plus one. And this is also important because at the end of the entire round, once we're all done with this turn, before we start the next turn, we're going to collect all of our face-up cards, but we will leave the support cards exactly where they are. And that is important because those, uh, you know, support cards will stack up over multiple rounds and eventually, you know, really contribute to much higher values later on in the game. So support cards are nice to do right away. Um, so that's what the plus symbol means. And of course, every symbol we're going to find on two different cards. Uh, so we're going to see that here with a plus one or here with the, the activate. So let's talk about the activate symbol, which is this little turn sim symbol. That, by playing that card, or by playing this card and choosing this one, that is how you take one card and turn it sideways. And by turning a card sideways, you're going to apply its effects. Sometimes they will nullify somebody else's card. Sometimes they will move cards around. Uh, in the case of like the crook, which is one that I really like, she's only worth one normally. But when you activate her, you move her to a different thread. So it's kind of a bluff. I put her over here, you know, or, or Holmes might put her here. And then when he activates her, now she becomes a two. Because when you tap her, now you see in the top right, it's a two. So she grows in strength and moves somewhere else. And he gets to choose where he moves her. But it has to be another thread. Can't be the same thread. So it gives some unpredictability to your, to your offense or to your strategy. Um, but different, different uh, cards will do, all do different things. Uh, and some, they'll do things from moving cards around to canceling somebody's. The, there's a policeman that can actually put somebody in jail so it gets rid of a card altogether. And that is very effective. But you can't activate all of your cards. You only get to activate one. Um, so, uh, and then there's also the plus one symbol that we'll see on some of these cards. And those let you draw one more card into your hand. You're going to need more cards in your hand if you want to be playing add support card or the obligatory add one card into into play um, so the first player will do this first they will play at least this one but as many more as they would like and they can do them in any order but they must at least play this card they don't have to play the rest well and so Holmes will do that once Holmes is done and then I as Moriarty will then take my turn I will start to play uh, well these are mine I'll play these and they look the same for each player the backs are a little different though so we can see the backs it's the same artwork but the green is for Holmes and red is for Moriarty so uh, after Holmes plays his then Moriarty I will play mine and we will go back and forth until somebody hits six cards in play in which case then the next person takes one more turn and then we move to the final turn which isn't really the final turn it's just the final turn of the round then we will start a new round then the final turn happens some different things will happen and this is kind of cool it changes it up just a little bit so once we begin the final turn i've kind of fast forwarded a little bit until i have a, a, a several more cards out in play uh and what we will do in this case is we'll take our action cards flip them face down and assign them in secret to different threads. And I might do something like that. Holmes will do the same thing. And then in player turn order, starting with the first player, you'll choose one to reveal and apply one of the effects. Uh, you do not have to apply the effects, so you could flip it over and say, you know what? I actually don't want to do anything right now. Even in this case, even the obligatory card, you can opt not to use only during the final turn step. Uh, so basically you flip them over one at a time, uh, Holmes will flip one over, I'll flip one over. And this is where things get really interesting because maybe in this case, uh, I, I'll reveal one of these and I'll activate my spy network and I'm starting to power up this thread. Well, then maybe Holmes will then react and activate his crook, moving him somewhere else. He knows he's going to lose this one, so he figures he might win somewhere else. And, and that's an interesting thing because once we're all done, we're going to go into scoring and that's where we add up the values. And in this game, scoring is very important because... The more you win by, the more significant it becomes. So let's jump into scoring. So I'm going to start with this side, and we're going to score here. Uh, we're going to see that I've got a value of three right now, whereas Holmes has uh, opium, which is three, the policeman, which is three, and then the crook, who's activated and is now a two. 
So that's a total of eight. So Holmes is going to win by an awful lot. So they give us these handy dandy little scoring trackers where we can uh, use this little marker here and we can, you know, go all the way with this in the zero and I can say one, two, three, but then you've got one, two, three, and then one, two, three, and then one, two. So you can use this if you want, or if you want to just do the math in your head, you can totally do that. But this is also important to remind you that if you win uh, by basically more than two, you get a bonus effect. So here's what happens. If, if Moriarty wins, okay, if I'm, and I'm playing Moriarty, I didn't win here, but had I won by a value of only one or two, I would advance the clock an extra hour on Holmes, making him lose a precious time. Again, if it gets to midnight, it well, starts at noon, right? If it gets all the way to 12 again, Holmes loses. Uh, so I would definitely love to do that. But if I win by three or more, I advance the clock a second hour. So it's really great to be able to win by three or more. However, if Holmes wins uh, by a value of one or two, then that means they gain some valuable information on this crime thread. And they get to take one of these hourglass investigation tokens and put that right on the thread. However, if this thread already had an hourglass investigation, then instead they get to flip it over. So basically they get to flip it over and say, aha, the queen, uh, we found out you're targeting the queen. And then of course, you'll read the text to resolve any abilities and it will stay face up. It still remains a crime thread Cards can still be played here, and support cards that are, that are here will still remain. However, now Holmes is one-third of the way to victory. So uh, if Holmes wins by a value of three or more, he, he just outright solves this one without having to use, uh, without having to already have an investigation token there. So think of Holmes winning by one or two as being halfway there. And if he was already halfway there, it's the second half. If he wins by three or more, he flips it over outright. So that's really good for Holmes to be able to win at least one thread each turn by three or more. And Moriarty really uh, just wants to slow him down. Now, of course, if it's a zero and there's no winner, then there's no effect. Uh, and then you'll you know proceed on the next one and the next one. So in this case, um, in the middle case, I have one uh, tapped spy network, which I have two spies there. So that's going to be a value of three, uh, four, five which is going to be the tip-off. So I'm going to have a value of five for Moriarty versus two for Holmes. So I will win by three. Uh, so boom, boom, I give two more hours. And then we'll go to the last one where I have a value of four and he has a value of four. So it's a complete tie. So nothing happens there. And then what will happen is the end of the round, we will check to see if there's a victory condition. Are we at midnight yet? No. Has Holmes revealed all three yet? We and he has not. And we're going to just basically now collect all of our influence cards, put those into our discard pile, leaving support cards, which are going to count as one more. So now uh, Moriarty has a plus one on this one for next turn. Oh, actually, I'm sorry. I forgot to account that one. So Moriarty actually wins that one by a value of one. So <laughs> so Mor Moriarty is off to a good start here. Uh, but but yeah, so we'll leave the support cards. They'll count as a value, uh, a value of one so the more support cards you can play right away the more that will help you later on uh unless of course this one gets solved and then the support cards really don't move do a whole lot but there are cards you can activate that will move support cards around from one thread to another so a lot of things like that will happen and the next turn will happen we'll reveal another location and the next one will be oh at saint paul's cathedral this one we can play even more cards because this one has a higher card rate we can put down up to eight cards it also advances the clock one hour, and pretty much every location is going to advance the clock one more hour. So now you see we're almost halfway done. So that's one thing about this game. It plays very quickly. You'll find that the game is going to hit midnight probably in about three turns, you know, maybe four tops, depending on how many total rounds you guys play. And, uh, and that's basically, you know, the game in a nutshell. Now, there are a couple of other things about this game. There's a little bit more replayability to it. There's an alternate mode where you can play with additional helper characters. So we can add, uh, you know, John Watson and Henry Jekyll and George Lestrade. And, uh, you know, in, 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 uh, Moriarty gets his helpers like uh, Dr. Hyde and Jack the Ripper. And, you know, and so you can play with some extra helper characters in there, as well as there's this really nice box, which you may be able to get via Kickstarter, as well as some upgraded metal coins. And uh, I don't think we talked about the lock and key coins, too. Uh, there are certain cards that will disable a card, and you put these coins on there for a card to be disabled. It'll be tapped, but it doesn't actually add its effect, and that's how you mark that. And then we have, you know, nice metallic 
uh, some also uh, investigation uh, coins for homes to upgrade uh, those tokens. So there's a lot of little extras that you can get with the Kickstarter and you know it makes for a lot of replayability as well. So that's Clash of Minds, Holmes versus Moriarty. If you like what you see, I'll put a link down in the description below to the Kickstarter so you can check it out yourself and get some of these other extras as well. It plays pretty quickly, but it is only a one to two player game. So if you're looking more for a party game for a group of four or five players, this one might not be the game for you. But if you're looking for a game to maybe have as a pre-game before your big game night or a game to play with one other person multiple times and really work out that strategy, this one might do it for you. All right, guys. Well, that's all I've got for you today. If you like this video and you uh, like what I'm talking about and you'd like to see more, uh, I encourage you to hit that subscribe button. I'm always running giveaways. I'm always talking about new games. And I talk a lot about Star Wars. All right, guys. Well, that's all I got for you today. I want to thank my patrons on Patreon. You guys are amazing and definitely help make this all possible. I want to thank everybody for watching. Thank you so much. And as always, have a great day.